All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are with our guest this week, somebody I'm very excited to talk to, GG Poker Ambassador Jason Kuhn. Hey. Man, thanks for taking the time to join us. Of course, man. It's a crazy day, but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Why is it crazy? We are 30 minutes away from the 250K, so you're just running in here. The, um, the buy-in process here is a little bit um, stressful at times. They have to verify every single cent you give them, no matter which way you buy in. So just get here and try to convince them that you're not a criminal, even though <laughs> some of us probably are, and oh, let, no. them let us play the tournament. <laughs> you said uh, when we were arranging to get you on the show that this 250K is like your main event. Yes. What, what, how, can you explain that a little bit? Well, for a couple of reasons. Um, obviously, really love the high stakes stuff. That's what I pride myself on showing up and doing. Um, but this year is special for me because I don't get to play the main event. It's uh, mm. bittersweet. Um, my wife and I are expecting our second son in a week. Mm -hmm. Let's so, go. Congratulations. So, yeah. yeah. Go. So I'm shutting everything down. I'm going to be hanging out at the, the house and rooting for my friends to win bracelets this summer. So okay. I got to ask, does this mean you're going to miss the main event from here on? Uh, no. no. With your kid? I mean, I mean, no, shit, once man. he's won, he can take care of himself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There you go. Right. I was going to say the last time you, when you had your first child is shortly after, shortly thereafter, you won your first bracelet. Yeah. I think he was like a week old or something yeah, crazy. Oh, Maybe three weeks too. Yeah. It was nuts. What was yeah. it like to win that WSOP bracelet in 2021, the 25K Heads Up Championship? Kind of get that monkey off your back, so to speak. Yeah, it was amazing. I love Heads Up. Um, and, you know, since I remember the, my first WSOP, I was like, I can't wait to get to play. I think it was a 10K. And then it, it was a crazy 25K one year, the year um, Jake Cody won it. It had, like, all these big personalities. Like, um, who, who was the... Uh, the recreational player that Jake got heads up with for the win, uh, British guy, just amazing, amazing guy. Oh, I'm um, not sure. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> I always look at Chad for names like that. I'm like, yeah. ah, but it was like I it was just deep. sick. It was like it was like prime time, like watching these guys play heads oh, up. Man. And yeah, to get to play that was was awesome. Although it was strange times because it was still kind of in the middle of COVID, and you know, it was yeah. some weird. Oh yeah. We know. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. And you mentioned you've only played one other WSOP event this summer. No, no. I, well, I played one that partially on time. I showed up <laughs> almost on time for the hundred K. Okay. But the, I couldn't play the 50 K because I was, I was playing a cash game. And then the two twenty five Ks, I, I very, very late regged and had short sacks and busted. And, you know, I wish I could be here doing it more. It's so much fun. And one of these summers I'm going to commit the whole summer and just show up and grind everything. But Right now, it's just my life is so chaotic, and I'm trying to do the best that I can to manage my time well. Yeah. Speaking of the way your life is chaotic and things, I read a really great old interview of yours from like 10 years ago in Cigar Aficionado. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Dude, that, was so, that was crazy. One of the things that stood to me was you described going to Oahu. Like, you know, you had busted out, you're in Florida, you decided to go out to, to Hawaii, and yeah. that you, uh, you decided to, to focus on surfing. Um, and, and so your whole thing was, you just had to, you wouldn't leave till you caught a wave. Yeah. And it wasn't much of a wave that I caught and I got <laughs> racked over coral reefs and all kinds of things. But yeah, yeah you're, that's, an, that's but, awesome that you read that. But, I was really into that. But I want to ask you like the way your mind shaped it around that, like what's changed in 10 years? Like you were, you were in Florida playing the main, you know, playing the, the, yeah. the, 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 the WPT, I think it was, or, um, but then you it was decided Bay to stop. 101. I remember Bay, well, this. Right. It was yeah, Bay yeah. 101. And then I went straight to Hawaii, did some skydiving and some surfing and, um, what the main thing that changed between now and then was I've become much more systematic. I didn't really know the best way to prepare or the best way to learn back then, um, at least for my learning style. Yeah. And over the course of those 10 years, I've just um, been really blessed to have my eyes open in several different ways. And now I know the most useful ways to apply my time to prepare for future poker tournaments. And back then it was more guessy, feely, tricky. I just meant surfing wise. You're a better oh. surfer. Just joking. Just joking. <laughs> just, well, joking. just get on it. And get on it and see what happens. <clears throat> yeah. Is, is there yeah. any any uh, tips or anything that you might give somebody? Because you went. I've known you for a long time. Long time. You know, and you've went from you know grinding poker tournaments yep. all the time, and now you're in the stratosphere. I mean, you're playing. I looked at your hand and mob. You haven't cashed a tournament that with a. Uh, buy-in of $10,000 or less since November of 2021, I think. Was. You're playing high rollers <laughs> all around the world and you're crushing them. Yeah. Uh, you know, is there something that would just kind of click for you? I know you just mentioned, you know, learning style and what have yeah. you, but like, can you give the viewers a little well, in, look inside your mind, so to speak? The first thing that I would say is the first hand of poker that I was ever dealt, I was in it. It was like nothing, I to this day, nothing I've ever yeah. experienced. The first hand, I was like, there's something different about this. I like it. And then like in a week I was better than all my friends 
And in a month, I was like, <laughs> people were calling me a cheater. And then in six months, I was winning on the internet. <laughs> so I will say, like, I've uh, never, like, a lot of these guys, I feel like were, like, extremely talented at chess or magic or other brain games. That wasn't it for me. Um, I'd never had anything like poker happen for me before. And I just kind of went into it because I like to do it. So I'd say my best advice is don't play poker to make money. Play poker because you're obsessed with it. And then from there, as you stay in the chair and you get more reps, you just have to iterate. You have to continually find people that keep you passionate, that push you. I mean, the, the most important thing in poker is res resiliency mm -hmm. and um, not doing stupid shit. Like <laughs> the best way that you stick around in poker is to not burn it all down, which yes. is so easy to do. Things go hard for you and you just want to burn it all. The, um, you know, I think your history kind of compares parallels a lot with, with Doyle's history. You coming from the West Virginia, like I, you grew up on a farm, you know, like your history with your family sure. stuff. I know Doyle grew up like in West Texas where like there was no, no electricity. Mm -hmm. He'd go outside in like the 30 degree weather to go use sure. the bathroom outside. And he said like, he just wanted to get away from that lifestyle. And he was get a sick runner. It, that's another yeah. weird. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. He, was, he was an amazing, yeah. basketball amazing too. runner. He was, yeah. he was pursued by the Lakers. Yeah. You, you had the basketball, what, division three, you got a scholarship offer for that's or something right. like that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But, but when it comes to Doyle trying to use poker to, get away from that lifestyle or use sports really like, is that similar? Like, is that what do you think drove you to learn or pursue poker so intently was to well, get for me? I already had a way out. I knew yeah. at a young age that I wanted to get out of being in poverty. I yeah. knew that I hated it. Yeah. Um, and I was really driven to get my family out of poverty. So I went to school. I didn't really like finance, but Everyone convinced me that was the best way to make a lot of money. So I got an MBA. I did the finance undergrad stuff. So I had that way out. And that yeah. was my plan was to use that to get out. But then poker kind of blew all that up. And I got a finance gig. And like a few weeks in, all I could think about was poker every single night. And I didn't have too much money. And I was like, maybe I have a gambling problem. Maybe I'm a degenerate. But I have my degree now. So I'm going to leave this job. And I'm going to see what happens. And, um, you know. It, it really, the main thing for me has always been after that, finding people to level me up, finding people that yeah. are good people that believe in me, that we can mutually benefit from one another and, and just soak everything in that I can around them. And, and I think that one of my greatest strengths as a poker player is I'm not very judgmental. I don't truly think that I'm part of one specific thought camp. I think that I'm a hybrid of a lot of different poker players that have inspired me. Some of them mm -hmm. only playing live poker, some of them only playing online poker, some of them being new school, some of them being old school. And I feel like each one of those people has given me an extra strength in my game. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, we have Sean Deeb on one end of the spectrum. He's got this weight loss bet going on. But if you go to the other end of the spectrum of fittest poker players, your name has always been there for a decade. And yeah. I remember in 2021, you had a, well, you offered a prop bet yeah. where you could run uh, a certain amount in like what, 10 seconds, something yeah, like under, that? Under 11 seconds in the 100 meter. And it's funny that you bring that up because I've, I, I, I'm not very public on social media anymore, but I've been training really hard for the last, um, it'd be 40 some weeks now. Um, and I have a great track here in Vegas. I have a great gym, Project Wellbeing, where we're all we're doing sprint specific stuff. Devin Allen, um, Olympic sprinter and Philadelphia Eagle wide receivers coaching me. Um, and it's going fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't done any races yet, but I'm very, very close to the time. Um, there is no bet, but Bill Perkins and I are good buddies. And we he said, Hey, you're only getting older if you hit this. Um, I there's this track that I train at, it's Palo Verde High School. And they need a new weight room. It's probably a couple hundred grand. So if I hit it, um, I've already made some donations to the school. But if I hit it, Bill and I are going to, we're going to donate to their weight room and see if we can redo it for them. So it's, That's a, awesome, it's kind of a win-win if I do hit it. Everybody gets a little little boost. That's awesome to hear. Because yeah. like my question was going to be, was there ever a bet? And do you think you could do it to, you know, today? And obviously we got that answer. Yes, I think I can. Um, but I'm not going to say that I can until I just post a video of me doing yeah. it. Man, that's great. I yeah. wanted to get into um, what's something current with the uh, the community, you know, with, uh, like, I won't say specific names of apps and stuff, but with delays being removed from, sure. from poker trainers, um, there's been a lot of wonder about uh, both, like, what's available, what's 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 legal, I guess, here mm -hmm. on the table in live poker. But uh, we wanted to know about the Poker Integrity Council. Do you have any sort of updates yeah, so, based on all this stuff? Yeah, we've actually been hammering away lately. Um, that's one of the, another one of the reasons why I haven't been able to play a bunch of WSP events. 
Um, we've been working really hard at uh, doing a bunch of different investigations and and working towards strengthening GG security. Um, and we've had a, a lot of massive breakthroughs. And and I will say that um, we've got a really good grip on ways to combat and deal with these um, training tools that are being weaponized. You can't mm -hmm. necessarily be vocal about your methods publicly because you don't want to give the enemy an advantage. Sure. But I will say that um, I was really pessimistic about online poker. And after doing a ton of investigative work and seeing um, what can be done to stop it, online poker is much safer than, than you may think it is right now because all we hear is kind of gloom and doom right. about the guys multi-accounting and winning bracelets mm -hmm. or the you know the people rta and winning all this money online um all that stuff has happened for sure yeah but for the most part people are playing straight up man and in these cash games the highest stakes like a lot of these guys are just great players you know and the other thing that i would say is um poker tournaments are extremely nuanced and difficult to cheat at so like there is no bot that will give you the perfect solution for how to play a poker tournament. It's they're just too dynamic and too difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so the PIC is doing our best to put our heads together and listen to the community and make adjustments to protect online poker. And, um, and yeah, we're having a ton of breakthroughs and, and we will have within the next 60 days, we'll have some public reports to share about some information that we've come across. Very cool. You know, you mentioned GG Poker. I know you're an ambassador for them alongside Daniel Negreanu. Yes, sir. Now, what's it like to represent GG Poker, which is one of the biggest online poker sites in the world? It is the biggest online poker site in the world. Yep, yep. Um, <laughs> it, it's an overwhelming feeling. Um, getting to know the company's philosophy and seeing their leadership, I have to admit, like, I've always been a workhorse. I've always been a person who's, like, really motivated to improve. Um, the... The fellow that runs GG is scary. He's like the most terrifying person I've ever seen. He's so hungry to conquer. And, um, and it's really, really inspiring and seeing um, all the new ideas that are coming along. And you, you guys are going to catch a ton of new news of, of um, big steps that GG is taking. But it's just, yeah, I mean, it's amazing. It's obviously cool to be uh, like I'm buddies with Negreanu and it's cool to be around him and be in the ears of all these guys. But it's really, really special to see a company kind of go from its infancy to just an absolute monster. I mean, Gigi's a juggernaut and it's only just going to get bigger. So it's, it's the right, uh, right side to be on. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. When do you turn 40? Um, if I you don't mind my asking. Well, I turned 38 on August 14th. Right. So there you go. Yeah, do you because that's the age you have to be for uh, eligibility for the Poker Hall of Fame. Oh my God, it's crazy to think, man. Yeah, right. It's crazy to think I'm <laughs> like I'm like, getting to the eligibility age Gosh. and and like yeah, I mean obviously that's something that if I'm ever considered one day that would be a dream come true for me. You know, I've been watching on poker just like you since the early 2000s and just a massive fanboy. And every time I get to play with the legends, um, you know, like. Uh, it's heartbroken about Doyle passing, but one thing I was really happy about is we got to be buddies. You know, yeah. we talked. Um, yeah. I got to hear a lot of stories from him. Another one of my buddies is Bobby Baldwin. It's like amazing to mm. hear him talk about vintage Vegas, and I'm just obsessed with old school Vegas, just like you yeah. are. Oh, you know? it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I'm wrapped up in the history of poker, and and I, I told my wife recently, I was like, it's it's kind of crazy to think we're we're part of it. You know, like mm -hmm. we're in the fabric of this now. Like at least our little part, like seeing the Tritons grow and. Um, GG come about and, and play, starting from playing, you know, live tournaments at the World Series that were thousand bucks or before that five hundred dollar right. tournaments or online tournaments three dollars. Um, to be here and now playing the high stakes in the world, I'm a part of that story, and it's just it's really mind blowing, and it's not something that you think about. You just do your job for years and years and years, and you look up and you say, "Whoa, I did that," you know. Yeah, that's amazing, man. We're big into the poker history type of thing. You got an old school hat on. That's right. You know, right now we've got some stuff on the shelves uh, and it's great. It's that appreciation <laughs> that I know uh, we really respect. You know, you have, you mentioned Triton. You've been crushing it there. It's yeah. helped you amass, uh, you know, you've got 48 million in lifetime earnings, according to the Hendon Mob, which places you fifth on mm -hmm. the all-time money list. Do you have uh, any fifth? Yeah. Okay. Unless it changes. It, change, because it changes yesterday. so often. Yeah. It feels like, do you yeah, have any inkling for that top spot though? Um, I just don't think I'll ever be able to do it because I don't play the volume and my buddies like, like Steven Chidwick, Mikita Bajikuski, those guys, they play every tournament and they're the best players. And I just don't see why a guy like that or a guy like Ike um, mm -hmm. doesn't just hold the top spot because 
the thing with me is I love poker, but every year I'm like, I don't know how much longer I'm going to do this. Yeah. And then those guys are like, I'm going to do it forever. I'm going to travel and play every poker tournament. <laughs> so I just know it's not going to be me. It might be yeah. me for a year or something if they have one of these million buy-ins and right. I win it. But it's not going to be me in 10 or 15 years. Yeah, when you say, you know, how long are you going to be doing this? Is it, you know, when you talk to, you're going to having a family now, yeah. the traveling takes a lot out of it. You know, is it, is it something you're like, you imagine one day you're just going to give up poker kind of altogether, or you think you'll always play, but just maybe not at the stakes and traveling as much? Yeah. So I, I'll always be a poker player. I'm obsessed with poker. Yeah. Um, I love it. I love teaching and I love talking about it. Um, it's just always going to take different shapes. You know, my life is already completely different than it was three years ago. I hardly travel for poker unless it's for a Triton. I play mm -hmm. cash games more than I play tournaments. Um, it's just a different, it's a, a different beast. And I know that I, I just always want to be open to evolving to situations in front of me and always be a poker player. But if something, you know, comes up and I feel like I need to apply myself to it, you're not going to see me grinding the tour, you know, right. it's just not something that's going to work for me. Well, Speaking of Triton, the stuff before we move on, um, you know, I was watching a few weeks back when the, you and Dan Smith were at the same table. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's so hard to really know like what, what's going on with, with these high six players' minds. We always see everybody often being very, very quiet, mm -hmm. but you were very outspoken about something yeah. he was doing. It's been a few weeks now. Um, can, do you have any new thoughts on? Yeah, for sure. So the first thing I would say is I was blatantly out of line there. I know a lot of people took my side and like, my point to certain to a certain degree was valid, but Dan's a friend of mine. He's been mm -hmm. a friend of mine for a long time. Um, he is a great poker player. He's a really good guy. Um, but sometimes, as you guys know, if you're 10 days into a poker tournament, yeah, exactly. stop, yeah. you're both beating each other up nonstop. You know, like sometimes your days. rivalries are like the heaviest with your friends. No. And we get it. We yeah, do it you just go at it once. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, absolutely. And like, uh, like, I, I know everybody, like, wants drama in the poker world, and they want people, like, jumping on top of each other. And, and the truth of it is, is, like, I screwed that up. I should have pulled him aside and, and, and talked to him about the feelings that I had. And that was a massive stage for him. And just for me to, like, overgeneralize how easy the spot was and just, you know, be fed up. It was just, I was tired. I was stressed out. I didn't have any, anything left in the gas tank. And I just kind of snapped on the guy. So um, fully take blame for that situation. And it's something that we worked out. I, you know, like I said, he's my pal. I drove over to his house, um, told him I was sorry and, and we're good. And That's I'm awesome. rooting for him. Yeah. And yeah. And just like, uh, I, I would say like, I, I know it's fun to just say people are wrong or right in all these situations, but it's just a spectrum of like, there's a lot of stuff going on, man. And we're like, it's pressure. Like every, you know, uh, these high rollers, people like, are like, oh, these guys are passing the money around. They don't have any pieces of themselves. It's like, buddy, if you only knew the swings, <laughs> yeah. if you only knew the swings that we're dealing with. Like, yeah. look, we've all been playing nosebleeds for over a decade. If you think that Dan Smith is in there with 3% of himself, you got another yeah. thing coming. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So we're feeling it. And, and that's yeah. just the way, you know, it pops up once in a while. And, and I hope to do better in the future. But, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes you get weak. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing, man. That's yeah. Very, very authentic. And I appreciate it so much, dude. Sure. I know Gosh. you've got a big tournament to get to. Yeah, One more question yeah. before you do. Aside from yourself, if you had to pick somebody else to win this 250K <laughs> buy-in tournament, who, who do you like in this field? I mean, it's always kind of the same for me. Like, I, I think that the you can never say who the best player in the world is. It's always kind of a, like a rotating eight guys. Um, if I'm not in the tournament and I'm trying to bet my life savings on somebody, uh, Chidwick, um, mm. Makita, Nikki P is an mo absolute monster. I mean, all these guys are sick. Seth is sick. Yeah. Uh, Christoph. Uh, Ike is having an amazing year. Yeah. And it's just like, no Ike's the OG legend. Like, the ultimate, mm -hmm. in my opinion, like the ultimate poker player. So, any of those guys uh, would be up there for me. But yeah. it's who's feeling it, you know? Well, awesome. Jason, thank you so much for taking the time to join yeah. us. No kidding, dude. Good thank luck you. in the Thanks, tournament. Man. And for those of you watching, remember, we're recording new episodes every Tuesday and Friday from the 2023 World Series of Poker. So be sure to tune in twice a week for the Chad and Jesse Poker Show on PokerNews.com. Don't forget to tune into PokerNews.com for all things World Series of Poker. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss a single moment.